if you sit down and you work out the the economics of the robo taxi thing tesla's got a really big problem on their hands like if they get robo taxi working because if you if you sit down and you work out the economic value of robo taxi as a feature like if you have it and you can deliver it you like it's it's so economically valuable to say a taxi network to someone who wants to use that thing that like you individual people won't be able to afford it just like people don't buy taxis right it'll it, it's it's the the economic value like the net present value of having robo taxi during the first year or two when when they haven't saturated the market yet it's going to be a couple hundred thousand dollars so pricing that is going to be really like do they sell it to people for way less than the economic value. Cause what's going to happen is the cars are just going to get scalped to death, right? People will buy the cars and turn around and they'll sell them to fleet operators who, who want to make $50,000 a year off of using a robo taxi, which like, that's what they're going to be worth. Actually, they're going to be worth 200,000 bucks or something like that in the, when they first roll out. And then as the market saturates, the value will come down. So they've got this pricing problem where they're going to have this feature. It's going to be, the economic value is going to be ridiculous and then it's going to rapidly come down. So it's a, it's a pricing problem to sell into that window. Like you don't want to leave money on the table, but you still want people to be able to buy the cars. But then if people are paying $100,000 for the software and like a few months, you know, two years, three years later, as the market saturates, the value of the feature comes way down. Then they're upset because they've paid a ton of money for a feature that's that's no longer worth as much. Like. Man, pricing the robo pricing FSD as as it becomes like I'm going to be really interested to see. Like I have not been able to figure out the right way to sell to price that. I mean, going into it. So all so all of this is you know obviously and it's up for debate. Not everybody agrees, but like this mm-hmm. is assuming that the cars today with the hardware today mm-hmm. will be able to do it when the, with the newer software. Which again, a lot of people think that it will. A lot of people mm-hmm. think that it won't. We'll have to see. Um, if it requires hardware four or hardware five, whatever, or if it happens, you know, it doesn't happen, say in the next year or two, say it happens 10 years from now, well, how many cars that are a few years old now would sure. even still be on the road? So there, there's definitely factors there, but I mean, a real simple view that I have of this, and maybe, I don't know if you thought about it this way, is that, you know, similar to software licensing, right? Like software licensing has been a thing for years. Um, if I, as a person buy a piece of software, it's not the same price as if a company buys it to make money. So you could arguably, they could have FSD where it's a level two system and you pay this amount of money to a normal person and it's for you. If you want to use it as a tax or you want to make money off or you do something else, well, guess what? You're paying a hundred grand on top of that. And otherwise, if anything happens or you're caught or anything goes on, you're legally liable. You're, you know, you're potentially in trouble. Things you know, happen. Yeah. So, they, they do have... The thing that they announced was you're only going to be able to use the vehicles through the Tesla network. So if they set up a Tesla network, you have to operate them through them through that. They have this out where they can make all the money on the back end, right? Essentially, whatever fee, whatever you know, if if uh, for what what what's their cut? The thing is, people are going to be unhappy if their cut is ninety percent, right? So like y- y- pricing always has to take into account the psychology of the people on the other end of the deal. Because if people feel like they're not getting a good deal, they'll just opt out of doing it, even if it makes sense economically for them to do it. If, if they feel like they're getting ripped off, they won't participate, right? So I think Tesla, to some extent, like if they want the Tesla network to be successful, they can't take a 95% cut or a 90% cut. They got to take a 30% cut, maybe a 50% cut. Like people will consider that fair. But the thing is, if they're only taking a 50% cut, then then they can only extract like 50% of the value by taking that cut and they have to give the other half out. Well, so if this feature is, if this, if this thing, I mean, the dynamics are really changing. Two years ago, it would have been the case, you know, if they had, if they had actually shipped RoboTaxi like at the end of 2019 or in 2020, the number of Teslas on the road would have been small enough that the value would have been astronomical. Like the value of the software would have been many times higher than the value of the car itself. So how do you how do you appropriately extract that? And and you also have to take in, in into consideration that their goal is to you know the the company goal is to accelerate the transition to sustainable energy. Well, RoboTaxi is a really important component of that because 
you because every like instead of thinking of like every car tesla sells is an ice that comes off the road think of it as like every mile a tesla drives is a mile that an ice doesn't drive so if you can get teslas out that are driving five times as many miles you're taking five times as many ice cars off the road so like from their mission standpoint it's important to do that so if they if they if they mess up the pricing in a way where the people who are buying cars aren't using them as robo taxis, they're leaving all of these ice miles on the table that they could be taking off. So to the, if the, if robo taxi is working, you want people to use it because you want them to get out of the internal combustion vehicles and you want them to be riding around in electric robo taxis if you can. So how do you get the incentives right? So that the people who already bought all the cars, cause it, you know, when the software becomes available, most of the cars able to use it, they're already going to be in the hands of retail customers who bought the car. So how do you incentivize them to open up to the network? Well, you, you have to give them an economic advantage, but if, if the economic advantage is too high, then all the cars that you sell are going to turn around and get scalped, right? So right. like, how do you do that thing where everybody is incentivized to do the thing that's good for the world collectively, but where Tesla can still sell retail cars? You this know? was part of the anticipation, right? With the, mm -hmm. the, the, no, you couldn't buy out your lease for a, a model three or, or a model Y that was, that was anticipating that kind of future that hasn't quite happened yet. Right. Yeah, it's I, they were wrong on the timing. Everybody's wrong on the timing. I was wrong on the timing. I thought it would happen faster than this. Um, it's taken a long time to get it working. And uh, so so I think a part of the problem with the, with their uh, with the policy that they have is that they mistimed it. Right. They thought that they were going to deliver the feature sooner. And the other part is they have to be thinking ahead I mean, they're planning for success. They're expecting to deliver this feature. They're designing their business around developing this feature. And I think they're pricing it, assuming that it that they're going to deliver the feature, right? And how do you price that? Is like, it's just, it's a really hard problem to, to get right. I, I, you know, I suspect there's going to be a lot of outrage and frustration and stuff. Just like, you know, when they lower prices, people get pissed off. When they raise prices, people get pissed <laughs> off, you know? I mean, there's, True. Be, because there's always somebody on the wrong end of that deal, right?